I'm Kate Libby, the Director of Education and the Associate Curator here at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and I'd like to welcome you back to another installment of Chesapeake Treasure, a feature here on Facebook where we explore one of the more than 68,000 objects in our collection. So in honor of the 4th of July, I wanted to choose something really patriotic and quintessentially American in our collections, and there is nothing more patriotic than our trail board collection. So if you're not super nautically knowledgeable, um, a trail board is basically a piece of decoration, a long, thin design that attaches to the bow of vessels like bug eyes and skipjacks, traditionally oystering vessels in the Chesapeake Bay. And this is part of a very long tradition of nautical ornamentation or vessel ornamentation. I mean, think about the Vikings with dragons on their boats or the Phoenicians that actually added eyes to the front of their boats so they could see, you know, and figureheads later in the 18th century. Um, in the Chesapeake and really in a lot of working maritime communities though, as vessels were created more quickly, um, as vessels were created with, you know, less expensive materials, a lot of those traditions kind of went by the wayside. Um, but here in the Chesapeake, they were maintained and to a really beautiful effect. So it's a really neat cultural tradition that we see continuing. Now, initially, a lot of this ornamentation on vessels would have been uh, regulated when we were under crown rule by the British. I mean, they had a very well-organized British Navy, um, and they had all sorts of regulations about what you could and couldn't do to your boats. And typically, the ornamentation that you would have seen in that time period would have been a lion, the symbol of Great Britain. Um, when we became our own country and gained independence after the Revolutionary War, you, the, the icons or the motifs that you see becoming really popular are eagles, right? The symbol of our country, this idea that, you know, we are a, the patriotic United States and we're proud. Um, our flag, too, became a very popular way of conveying the idea that this is an American vessel. And another way you could do that was incorporating stars. So a lot of the trail boards in our collection do contain those motifs, but not because they were popular in the 18th and early 19th century, but really because after the Civil War, but really the centennial in 1876 brought about this brand new wave of, um, of pride and being American, excitement over traditionally American motifs, you know, those spread eagles, cannons, um, cannonballs, um, uh, stars and bars, and you know, people were really interested in, in adding them. And this is really, the 1876 is the time period also of the peak of the oystering industry. So we see this interest in patriotism with this time period in the oystering industry when there was so much money in the Chesapeake to be made harvesting oysters that you could add a little extra something special to your boat to show how proud you were of her. So I want to show you some of the really cool examples in our collection. So we're going to go over my head and we're going to talk about some of these trail boards that we have here in our collection. So the one at the very top, the Catherine May, that black board with the yellow engraving, this is a relief carving of an acanthus leaf. That's a really kind of traditional 19th century design motif that you see in a lot of other places in the 19th century, whether it's on furniture, it's on plates. Um, but some of the carving that you see, particularly in the Rosie Parks, the Annie W, and the Nellie Bird, to me just really speak to that time period of heightened patriotism and this sense that these trail boards were a way to display that your prowess as a waterman, your pride in being an American. So the Rosie Parks in particular was carved by a man named Dewey Webster out of Deal Island in the 1950s, which was kind of the second wave of oystering after World War II. And you can see he's continuing this 19th century tradition of including a spread eagle. He's got a shield below that with stars. There's two flags on either side. And of course, then there's the cannon with three cannonballs, which was his trademark. He also carved another um, of the, the uh, trail boards that we have in our collection for the H.M. Krentz, a vessel that docks here at the museum. And again, on that particular trail board, you see those three cannonballs. But he didn't come up with this idea. If you drop a little bit lower to the Nellie Bird, which doesn't have the gilding of the Rosie Parks, an indication of Rosie's success and, of the, and the success of her captain in oystering that they could afford to add this expensive material to a very much a workboat. The Nellie Bird, what I love about her is if you look to the left 
of the name Nellie Bird, you can see that there's kind of this vine um, detail with black-eyed Susans. So what does that say to me? That says that the Nellie Bird is not just proud of being an American, that the captain of the Nellie Bird is also proud of being a Marylander. And of course, the, the black-eyed Susan is the Maryland state flower today. And in the 19th century, it would have been a, a recognizable way for other skipjacks, maybe from Virginia, to recognize that the Nellie Bird was a Maryland vessel. And that's a really important distinction, especially in the 19th century when people were fighting Virginians versus Marylanders over oystering, and this was on an oyster boat. So it would have said to everyone who saw the Nellie Birch Trailbirds, not only is this somebody who's proud to be an American, but this is a Marylander, and you better not mess with me if you're from Virginia. Um, if you drop down a little bit lower, again, we see that cannonball motif. Cannons and ramrods, they think that that particular design was developed during the Civil War, when you, you know, cannons were such a part of um, the, the weaponry that was used in that uh, particular conflict. And so cannons and cannonballs, again, be, really became associated in the 19th century with patriotism. And again, it goes back to that 1876 Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia, where they had a whole pavilion that was dedicated to sort of colonial history and people became much more interested in the patriotic American feel of the country and the motifs associated with that. And finally, below that, on the Lizzie Lee, again, a lot of these trail boards, you know, it really depended on how successful your vessel was, whether you could afford to have one that included gold leaf or gilding. The, the Lizzie Lee is a lot more simple, but what I love about her particular trail board is if you've got that vine detail to the left, but to the right, you have a really big eagle head. Again, it's that quintessential American symbol of success, of of being a, an independent nation. And to me, it, again, it represents that connection with probably the Centennial Exposition and the design motifs that came out of that. So it's, to me, you know, this is a, these are all examples of non-necessary um, decoration. So why would you incorporate something like this onto your boat? Because you are proud, you are successful. You know, these trail boards would have been touched up multiple times every summer. They also probably would have been taken off in the winter time and stored inside. People were very meticulous about them. And at the end of the, the life of a lot of these vessels, most of which were only built for one man's lifetime, these, um, these trail boards were typically retired. They were taken off the vessel forever, and a lot of watermen had them in their homes as a way to display their pride in the tradition that they had been a part of all during their working life. So the patriotism that I see in these trail boards are just as much about being proud of being a waterman, being proud of being a Marylander or a, Virgin, uh, a person from Virginia as much as it is about being um, somebody who's proud of living in the United States. And again, is there anything more American than local pride? I don't think so. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Chesapeake Treasure and learning a little bit more about some of the frankly, the just dazzlingly beautiful trail boards that we have in our collection. Um, if you come to visit the Maritime Museum, you can see them for yourself in our steamboat building and our Van Lennep Auditorium. Um, they are amazing works of folk art in addition to being a great way to remember how proud on the 4th of July we are here in the Chesapeake to be Americans. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, check in back in a couple weeks for another installment.